Hey guys, Grady's mom here with a cooking video for you. It is another quiche recipe. I know you guys know I love my quiche. Um, this is again a super super simple recipes uh, recipe. Most of the recipes that I do on my channel are easy because um, a they're easy to film and they're easy to make. And I love things that are easy to make and also delicious. So quiches, I've said before, are so simple. It's pretty much an egg pie. And what you choose to add into it usually can work. Um, you just really have to use your best judgment. You can use any combination of ingredients. You can use vegetarian. You can do all meat. You can do cheese. I mean, it really is sky's the limit, which is why I love making quiche. So all you need for this quiche is um, to, you can either make your own pie crust, which my hat's off to you if you do that because I cannot bake, I don't like it. So I just buy the two pack, um, any brand will work. I just have the Publix brand here of the ready to make pie crust. Again, it's a two pack and I only need one. So I can get two quiches out of one box of pie crust. And when pie crust goes on sale, which this is the time of year guys, Thanksgiving, to get your pie crust, stock up. Actually, when I go this weekend, I'm going to get like four boxes of these. So there's two in each box because they're usually on sale again for Thanksgiving or even Christmas because everybody makes pie. So you'll need a pie crust. You need some half and half. Um, I'm using cheddar cheese. You guys know I love my cheddar cheese. You don't have to use cheddar. You can use any cheese in the world that you love or that you have. So I have cheddar. I have a zucchini and a yellow squash. I have some red onion. I have some diced ham, but again, you don't have to add any kind of meat if you don't want to. You can just do vegetables. And then I'm, I'm going to add some shredded matchstick carrot um, for texture and color because I want this to be, um, you know, pretty to look at as well as delicious to eat. So, um, oh, and then just four eggs. And then I also have just some black pepper. I'm not going to add salt because of the ham. If I was not adding the ham, I would need salt or it would taste terrible because the vegetables don't have salt in them. So I'm going to add the diced ham, um, again, the black pepper, and I might add some Italian seasoning. I will let you guys know as we progress in the video. So this is all you need. Again, if you don't want to put ham, you can add sausage, you can add bacon, you can add cut up leftover chicken, you can add any meat you want, or you can skip the meat altogether and just do some veggies. You could add tomatoes, you could add... Um, Broccoli. Honestly, guys, whatever leftover vegetable you have from last night, put that in there. It's all going to be good. So this is, again, just a general idea of what you need. Okay, guys, so I actually ended up using half the zucchini and half the yellow squash. So I just have, like I said, about um, half left, and I just put it in this little baggie to use for another recipe. I'll probably throw this in some soup um, later this week. So again, this is half the zucchini and half the squash sliced up. And then I just took, you know, I don't know, a quarter of the red onion and just diced that up a little bit. And right here I'm going to put, um, I have a large frying pan. And I actually put just some olive oil. I forgot to mention that as one of the ingredients. Um, I actually forgot that you do have to pan fry the vegetables um, in a little bit of olive oil. So I just have the pan just heating up nicely. Okay hey guys, so we want to throw, um, if you are adding carrots, if you're following along uh, ingredient wise, if you're not, that's fine too. You're going to want to add the carrots first because they are a lot harder. Um, they're a root vegetable, so they're a lot harder than the squash would be. So you don't want to add the squash first because it'll get all mushy and nasty. And we want it to have a little structure still. So I went ahead and preheated the pan again in a little bit of olive oil. And I just had the carrots just going to work just for a couple minutes. Next, I'm going to add just the onion because the onion is a little crunchier than the squash. So I'm going to just add my onion in. And then I'm also going to add off camera um, this diced ham. I'm not sure how much yet. I was thinking maybe the whole package, but if I find that it looks like too much because it's very condensed, they, they vacuum seal it. So once I take it out of the package and I see how much is in there, um, I will let you guys know how much of that meat you're going to use if you are using it. Okay, guys, so that ham was an 8-ounce package. Um, that's what the actual net weight of the meat was. I used about 6 ounces. This is what I have left over. 
And to me, this looks like two ounces. So I'm gonna call it six ounces. If you wanted to throw in all the ham, I don't see that being an issue at all. Um, just for me, I think that this is a good amount based on all the rest of the fillings that are going in it. Um, you can't forget about the cheese as well. So I am just lightly letting this work a little bit and I'm actually going to go ahead and get the squash in here now since this is all warming up nicely. Okay guys, so I just put the squash in. I did add a little bit of a drizzle of olive oil just because I don't want the squash to get dry. And I am now gonna add a nice hearty few shakes of black pepper. And I'm just gonna kinda stir this a little bit so that um, the squash gets coated a little bit with that just uh, tiny little drizzle of olive oil because we want everything to cook a little bit. Again, we don't want all this to be mushy because it is gonna go into the oven for almost an hour. So it's gonna finish cooking, but we don't want anything to be raw or hard going in because it just won't cook quite to the right consistency that we want it to. Um, so I'm just gonna let this pan kinda hang out for about five minutes and I will show you guys what it looks like when we are ready to fill up our pie shell. Okay guys, so hopefully you can see me. Um, you can see what I'm doing here. I just have a regular pie dish, nothing fancy, just a standard pie dish. And then I have a two cup um, <clears throat> Pyrex measuring cup with four eggs that I cracked in there. What I'm just going to do is take a fork and I'm just going to puncture each yolk and then I'm just going to scramble them really kind of well in this Pyrex cup. You definitely want to make sure they're scrambled well. You don't want any, you want all the yolk to be scrambled, okay? So you're going to do that. So there, that looks pretty good. Nice and scrambled. Next, I am going to take my pie um, crust. And you're going to definitely want to work with it thawed out. You're not going to want to work with it frozen or even a little bit frozen. You're going to want it completely thawed out, um, cold or even room temperature. And then you're just going to roll it out gently like that. Super easy. And you're just going to put it right in the pie dish. And what you're going to want to do is use your fingers to make sure that it's um, flat against the shape of the pan. And I will show you what I mean in a second. Um, now my husband doesn't like the quiche crust. I'm not a huge fan. So anything that's kind of extra, like excessive, I actually tear off because I just am more interested in just sort of the base part. I just recently started doing that because I realized my husband never ate it and I didn't really care for it as much either. Um, a lot of people like the crust. In that case, definitely don't, don't bother taking it off. Keep it on. So, see guys, I just really molded it oops, to the shape of the pan. Um, I did tear off a little too much here. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit kind of just back in that spot because we want, um, we don't want the egg or the quiche to stick to the pie dish. We want everything to stick. So I sort of doctored that up. I don't know if you guys can see. I doctored it up right there a little bit. Okay, next um, what I'm going to do is I have my um, frying pan with everything all set to go. And as you can see, it's not mushy. Um, it's just, just very lightly cooked. And I'm going to go ahead and get everything from this pan, it smells really good, right into the pie dish, directly into the pie dish. By the way, I've already preheated my oven to 375. Um, you're going to want to preheat your oven if you're planning on making this right away. Um, and even though this is our dinner tonight, I want to have it completely done and cooked. So, hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here. So I have all the filling in the pie dish. I'm going to move this down a little so you guys can see a little bit better. Okay, next what I'm going to do is my egg here. I'm actually going to add about three quarters of a cup of the half and half. So my four eggs equals almost exactly um, one cup. So I'm just going to add the half and half until it is at one and three-fourths cups. Therefore, I know how much I've added. Then I'm just going to give it a very gentle little whisk because it's sort of full and you don't want it flying everywhere. So that is ready to go. Next, I'm going to take my sharp cheddar cheese. And as you guys can probably tell, I don't, I'm not really measuring formally. 
Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and put my cheese right on top of my meat and my veggies. And again, guys, I'll type everything up down below once I figure out the measurements so you guys are not left in the dark thinking how much of this and how much of that. Okay, so I added the cheese, and what I am doing now is sort of folding um, very gently because you don't want to puncture the pie shell. I'm just folding the toppings, meaning the meat and the veggies, into that cheese. The reason I am doing that is I don't want it to be layered, meaning when you cut the quiche, I don't want it to be veggies and meat on the bottom and cheese only on the top. Um, if you like layered, great. Don't bother doing this step. But I like when the cheese is all melty and gooey all the way through. That's just me though. So I am just, like I said, very gently, almost like a raking motion, but not touching the bottom of the pie shell. And then you want to make sure it's pretty much as even as possible, you know, no areas that are much higher. Um, and again, nothing's perfect, so just do your best. And then that is what it looks like when the cheese is evenly distributed with the veggies and the meat. Lastly, I'm going to take this Pyrex that I have with the milk, or the, excuse me, the half and half and the four eggs, and I am literally going to just pour it right over this mixture. And just kind of pour it evenly right over the top. Again, nothing, you know, cooking, you don't have to be perfect. Just pour it right over the top, like that. And it is gonna rise a little bit. And what I like to do, you don't have to, is I like to just take, I don't know, three quarters of a handful of cheese and just put it right on the top. But I like cheddar, love it, actually. So, I just have it just like that. And that is a close up of what it looks like, guys. Again, I know there's several, several variations of this. Some people like the crust, some people don't like cheese, some people don't eat meat. I mean, again, this is a dish that you can really create it to what you like and what you have on hand in your pantry and your fridge. You might not have all of these items and might not be able to make a trip out to the store. So really just use whatever cheese you have, whatever veggies, like I said, leftover veggies from the night before would work just fine. Um, leftover meat from the night before would work just fine. Um, it's really what you have. So this is going to go into a 375 degree oven for um, probably 45 to 50 minutes. I will let you guys know exact times in the description down below. And I will show you guys the beautiful finished product. Okay guys, so it took about 45 minutes for this. And as you can see, it did puff up a little bit, which is completely normal because of the egg. And then just the darker areas is just that extra sprinkle of cheese that I put on. So with any quiche, if this is your first time making or even eating one, don't cut it right away because if you do, it's going to just be a hot mess on a plate. You want to let it sit for a bit. Um, I would say ideally probably about 20 minutes before you cut it. Um, that's just something to keep in mind if you are making this and you have to factor that cooling down time or you know setting time um, from the time you're actually going to eat. So if you want to eat dinner at 5.30, you're going to want to take this out of the oven a little bit after 5 um, at a minimum and let this sit for 20 um, to 30 minutes um, because it's going to slice a lot cleaner and stay together a lot nicer um, in an actual slice rather than just a hot mess of a crumble. Um, and that goes for pretty much any pie-like thing, you know, even a regular pie that we eat. You know, it says on any box or anyone will tell you you want to let it sit before you cut into it, which makes complete sense. It has to set up. It just came out of the oven. Um, so yeah, this is what it looks like. And once you cut into it, obviously, it's a lot prettier with all the different vegetables and the meat and everything. So it is 12.30 and my dinner for tonight is done. So I will just let this cool down um, just to room temperature and then I will cover it with foil. I'm going to put it in my fridge and then um, about a half an hour before I want to eat dinner, I just pop it back in the oven just to warm it up at 350 and make a little salad and this is our dinner for tonight. So I hope you guys enjoyed this cooking video. Thumbs up if you want to see me do more regular ones. I really am trying to get my act back together with my filming. Um, it's just been a lot of stuff going on um, here since we've moved and Grady's starting school and all of that. But I am hoping to get back into my routine. So I will see you guys all very soon in my next video. Bye.